Monika Holmeyer, being the rapporteur on the um, report on the budget 2015, I have the feeling that uh, you have had to fight against especially the council, but in the text I see that you had to correct figures made by the commission. Were you in line with the commission in your fight against the council? Um, I wouldn't say that we are in a fight against the council. That's not our kind of handling conciliations and trilogues uh, with the council. But we criticize the cuts of the council. Um, not only because we criticize uh, cuts and we, because we would like to have more money, that's not the issue. But the cuts, cuts were not reasonable. The cuts the council did were, t uh, were concerning um, innovation, research, uh, then humanitarian aid, development policy. So all the three areas are at the moment the most important areas that we have because for example humanitarian aid this is the issue of Ebola this is the issue of the refugee camps in Lebanon in coming out of Syria a lot of millions of refugees so we have to, to, to do our duty to fulfill no the, to fulfill our duties oh it was to see because but the member states know since uh, they did the cut some uh, only some some weeks ago so there we already had millions of refugees so everybody knows it but you showed great concern about especially the small and medium-sized um, um, companies Yes, there is a new program that the European Parliament uh, pushed through. Um, it's a research program, especially for small and medium-sized companies, because the European Parliament thinks that uh, medium-sized and smaller companies need more help to be innovative, uh, that startups need to be helped. And that's where the jobs lies. Yes, that's where the jobs lies and we would, would like to support growth. And if um, the member states are talking up about 300 billion infrastructure programs uh, or programs for, uh, uh, for the economy, then they should think that they now cut the, the research for one billion. So I don't understand why on the one side we discuss a new program for growth for 300 billion and on the other side uh, there is a cut in uh, innovation and research field of Horizon 2020. There are excellent programs in. We have Nobel Prize winners out of this program. So um, to cut this area is the better thing that they could do. But why do they do it? That's what we asked them. We didn't get any answers till Pressure now. Pressure from the national states? I think the pressure from the national states is, from a part of national states, um, is that uh, they have to do cuts. But that they did the cut in this way, and what we criticize is, we are criticizing is the 28 member states signed some months ago, only some months ago, a seven year financial framework. Exactly. And only some months later, they don't want to fulfill the programs they signed only some months before. So there is no change in economic field, in crisis point of view. It was nearly the same situation. The only that is uh, where we have really an increased need is the, in, is the internal security field because of the fight against terrorism, fight against ISIS fighters, so transnational fighters coming home, uh, the, the border problem, um, human traffickers really killing people, they are not the nice people that they are sometimes told to be, they are not helpers, they are just killing people, they are just uh, taking away poor people, the last things that they have, and um, the refugees cannot be sure that they uh, will arrive here in the European Union or on a safe place in the world. Could you uh, foresee that the the growing criticism uh, towards the EU could be one of the reasons on national level for the national states to be more uh, looking upon where can we cut instead of where can we help? The contrary. The cuts and the misunderstanding in between 28 member states produce the mistrust against the European Union. 
So for one example only, uh, I can give in, a, in an interview, <laughs> I could give a lot of examples if uh, we would have time, but uh, the issue is that um, in, uh, in that moment, uh, we are standing um, uh, in front of a project, um, uh, pr project realizers in the European Union member states. They have done an excellent job. They have fulfilled all criteria. Now they are coming new controlling system changing the standards uh, after having fulfilled all criteria to, let's say, to, to have less bills in the European Union. Um, that's not the way of handling. This causes more mistrust against the European Union because all those people doing projects, uh, this can be um, social projects, projects in the research field, project in the regional field, project in, in environmental field, in, in agriculture. And in the last month, I got a lot of, of, of mistrust of, all, of, of a lot of people saying, you are changing the standards after having controlled us before, how can you do this? So uh, I think that this, um, this misunderstanding in between the 28 member states, um, not focusing the most important fields in the, in the European Union, uh, we propose from the European Parliament that we would like to have an exchange of stuff in between um, uh, areas. There are certain areas no more being so important, so to have their less stuff and to do an exchange to other fields where we need more, more stuff in the European Union administration. In the field of agencies, the member states refused even the discussion. Last question. Uh, you and I, when we are private persons, are asked to pay our bills when we get bills. Yes. When the EU is confronted with bills, the council at least says, no, no, you shouldn't pay everything. In other words, you have uh, been asked to uh, not to fulfill your obligations. How do you feel about that? Um, that's, the, uh, that's really one of the questions we, we, we ask uh, the member states. Because first we have the seven-year multi-annual framework. So we discussed and decided together the new programs. So that's not new. A second thing, if member states don't want to pay as much, then they have to reduce the programs at home. Because the, the situation is that the member states are responsible for the programs at home. So they give the allowance to uh, um, institutions, to people uh, pr um, fulfilling the programs, having good ideas then those people or institutions send the bills to the member states and the same member states are sending this to the European Union. We are not producing bills here. We only say if we have programs and if they are um, implemented in the member states and the bills are sent to the European Union, then we have to pay them. Um, we force um, companies, we force cities, we force regions to pay their bills adequate in the minimum time of 30 days. In the European Union we have sometimes time delays of two years, of three years, and that's not acceptable. And the so-called resta liquide begins to grow, to grow. And we ask... The, if the we so-called what? Resta liquide. That's the bills that are still not paid. Okay. Um, and that could be presented by the member states. The bills that are presented at the moment are 25 billion. Um, now we discuss how to solve the problem. We are ready to discuss and to contribute to a solution, but the solution can't be that the uh, European Union begins to make debts. We are not allowed to have debts. We are doing only investments, so we are not allowed to have debts. And that's the thing that we won't accept to have depth. Um, we will ask if member states are no more fulfilling the Lisbon Treaty. That's a question for the European Court of Justice at the end if there is no result. But I hope that the member states will um, try to begin to discuss more in a, in a more structured way than they did till and now. The Parliament has in this field power. 
Yes, I think that the Parliament at the moment is really decided to, to ask of the member states, you have to solve the problems. But uh, there is still a structural problem that I address since years. That's the problem that we have more commitments, exactly. but no payments, exactly. uh, less payments. So uh, that's a problem. Um, and if we continue this way, to have more commitments than payments, then at the end, uh, we will have so many bills and then we, have, we really have debts in the European Union. Uh, European Union level. And, and people this will is lose their allowed. trust in the Union. No. That's why we really try to force the member states to be rational and not to, uh, to produce, let's say, Sunday speeches. I, I, I ask to, to look to the reality. We are ready to, to get, discuss the reality, but this must be a rational type of discussion on not hiding bills not trying to, um, to, to get them later or something like this. If we don't have enough money, then we have to say it, and then we have to have less programs. But to ask for more programs and then not to pay it, that's not the thing how we can handle it. And bills don't disappear. Bills Thank you very don't much. disappear. <laughs> 28 member states have to, to clarify with us how we will go in the future. Thank you very much.